One of the newest additions to the Leviathan family, Almadron actually is one of my favorites. I think out of all the Rise monsters, all the all new edition Rise monsters, he's definitely my favorite here. But we're not to talk about that. We're going to talk about why he becomes the Magma Almadron, one of the newest subspecies and a new Leviathan in the Magma, well, a new Leviathan in the um, volcanic area. So let's begin, right? Almadron is a invasive predator. You know, he goes wherever water is and may even live in these areas. Now, I do believe Almadron does give live birth and may have the same family orientation as otters, but it also seems to have a lot going for it when it comes to its dietary habits. Considering the fact that you can find it in the desert, the flooded forest, and the, what you call it, shrine ruins, right? In the desert, I do believe Almadron would eat Baroth. This is only this is because Baroth is an, not only because Baroth is an insectivore, but because Almadron would easily be able to take it. It's a Leviathan with actually its armor-piercing claws, which are those big sickle-like ones, and it has these razor-sharp teeth, which are capable of crushing through bone. And if they can crush through bone, they can crush through armor. Almadron also has the better mud manipulation and can even trap Baroth in its own mud. Diablos is a very big iffy one, and I don't think Almadron would eat fully grown Diabloses, but I do think he would eat younger or more inexperienced Diabloses, more or less of the juvenile planes, right? Because juvenile Diabloses really don't go for too many cacti sources just due to the adults kind of always hogging them and if a young one is driven away well it'll go to water volvidon is kind of obvious in my opinion I, I mean really volvidon is pretty much everyone's food in the desert at this point like even to like a degree of he won't be eaten by bear off but he'll get picked off by every other predator all right so yeah volvidon obviously kuliaku I, I mean come on now we, we not going to act like this ain't, this ain't up for debate, okay? And another monster that I think would b be eaten by Almadron, and hear me out, right? So Almadron secretes this golden liquid, this golden mud, right? This golden mud is actually a superheated liquid that eats through earth and essentially rock as well. This allows Almadron to pretty much swim through rock and mud, sorry, rock and dirt as if it was mud itself. So this means it's able to break down the contents of rocks and dirt in order to form mud. That's actually a pretty decent form of molecular manipulation for a monster. So this means it's able to break down the enzymes or maybe even the particles of rocks and even, um, you know, some of the earth materials in order to slide through it like mud. And this is why I think Basarios would be on the menu. Now, Basarios is pretty much a monster made of rock, essentially, with all that good juicy meat underneath it. Pause, pause, pause. But anyway, I digress here. Uh, Basarios would definitely be on the menu. It's, it's, it, 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 it's an ore eater. You know, it's a very powerful ore eater or very powerful um, herbivore in a way, right? But essentially, I just think that Almadron kind of adds it to his diet with that golden mud. So you have Kuliaku, Volvidon, young Diabloses that are driven away or possibly injured from adults, uh, Baroth, and Basarios. With Diablos being kind of the middle ground, but the other four, I would definitely confirm it. Now, the flooded forest area does provide another good substance for Almadron when it comes to food sources. You have Slagtoth, and if I didn't mention earlier, Renafloss as well. So you have Slagtoth, Slag Jagras, Great Roggy, and Regular Roggies, which would easily be able to, um, you know, satisfy an Almadron. But you also have the monsters like Girotodus, which Almadron would eat. I, I mean, it's a Piscine Wyvern that's not... <clears throat> Oh, excuse me. It's a Piscean Wyvern that's not really too capable of defending itself from most predators. I mean, sure, it has the jaws and it's able to pretty much swim away from anything. And in some occasions, it does go for things that are bigger than it. But the thing is, right, if Almadron, Almadron would easily be able to get it simply because it's a faster, much more maneuverable creature. Speaking of fast and maneuverable creatures, we have Mizutsune. Now, this one is very iffy in my opinion, but Mizutsune would 
potentially be on the menu. It's a 50-50. It really is. Because Mizutsune doesn't have a real good and clear chance at beating Almadron. The only way it could really get away is by using his bubble phone to escape here. But here's the thing, right? Almadron has three different points of grasping on Mizune. It's claws, it's jaws, and it's tail. It, it, there's literally no way Mizutsune will be able to get away. Royal Ludroth. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, I would definitely have to say Royal Ludroth definitely could fit as a prey item. It's actually known to get eaten by some of the larger monsters as well. Even to a degree, a Shogun Centaurier can eat it. Yeah, Royal Ludra really ain't that high in the um, pecking order when it comes to the Leviathans. I mean, it it, it, it would get eaten. I, I really can't explain that too much. Azeros, easily. It goes for fish, and it actually goes and get fish here. And that would make it a prime and easy meal for Almadron because it does get distracted when it eats certain meals here. And fish and honey is just one of those that just that just fits the bill. So this means Almadron would be able to just sink into the mud and snatch it up. And now finally, Bishoten. I think we all should have saw this coming because Almadron actually has the turf war with Bishoten. And Bishoten is a prey item. Probably one of the only prey items confirmed in the game to be eaten by Almadron. Almadron actually lunges at it with its claws to actually rip it to part. Almadron's trying to grasp it with these claws here so it won't maneuver. Because it knows that Bishoten is very capable of maneuvering itself around the battlefield. So that means we have Azeros, Bishoten, Girotodus, and the 50-50 for Mitsutsune. And maybe a 50-50 for Royal Ludroth, right? The Shrine Ruins is another location that easily provides substance for Almadron. As a matter of fact, you find it here first in the game, which is actually pretty interesting. And Almadron all the way out here with very few sources of water. Matter of fact, the Shrine Ruins actually provide a good um, substance for it. So what does it have here? Well, there's the Tarantodon and there's Tetsukabra. Yeah, Tetsukabra is actually canon in this game, so I would definitely have to say that it's very easily assertive that Tetsukabra and Tetranodon would fall into prey animals. And I mean, we have a canceled Turf War concept art for Tetranodon and Almadron, so why not? Tetsukabra as well would fit the bill. Now, how would Almadron actually, like, find creatures like this? Even the likes of Aknasam would even fall prey to the likes of the Almadron. But how would he find them, right? How would he, like, get a hold of these creatures? How does he detect all these prey items? Well, that's simple. Almadron's whiskers, actually. Now, much like catfish and some other creatures as well, whiskers are a very sensitive organ, okay? It's actually a sensitive part of some of these animals. But in Almadron's case, it's actually an organ. It's actually, like, physically attached to its face, and it's on its, well, chin as well. So Almadron is able to sense the chemical or maybe the electrical signals of its prey items, right? Whether it be a Azeros um, in the water for a long period of time, stumping around or chasing down fish. Whether it's a Giratotus swimming after some slag toff, Okay. Almadron is going to sense it via the whiskers, and he's going to be able to pinpoint their location with that chemical signal. This means that Almadron would simply just, well, go after it. Now you might say, okay, but what if Almadron leaves the water? Well, if Almadron leaves the water, honestly, he could probably still detect the chemical signals. Even in during times of drought, Almadron's body is actually pretty easy to hydrate, you know? It might actually be immune to drought as well. Because of this gold, because like I said earlier, this golden liquid, this golden um liquid or superheats dirt and earth to the point where, sorry, dirt and rock to the point where it could form metal. This means that it's able to keep itself hydrated at all times. And honestly, I think its sensory organs also reflect that of a spinosaurus. Because if you guys look at fossil evidence, Spinosaurus actually has the same sensory organs as crocodiles. This means that Almadron may actually operate like a crocodile when it hunts prey. Just bursting out the water, snatching it, and dragging it down. This means that creatures 
pretty much near the water unsafe. Even regular water inhabitants like Slag Toth would have to be careful. Or regular fish eaters like, um, you know, some Piscivores in Monster Hunter. I would even have to say Tetsukabra may have to be very careful on where it nests. But let's talk about the one we really came here for. The Magma Almadron. Now, when it comes to these, we have to also take into consideration what Magma Almadron is. It's in the category of subspecies. Subspecies are its own you know, category in Monster Hunter. They're different than variants, which are very, very different. And I'll probably explain that in Wave 5 as well with another monster. But take a look at Ebneo Dogron, Rustarambros, or... Um, whatchamacallit, what's another subspecies? Oh, uh, Viper Toby Kadashi, okay? These subspecies are biological enhancements of the original species, which allows them to adapt and overcome certain scenarios. For example, Ebony Odogoron actually has dragon element because it was found in the Elder's Recess. This means it could compete with Elder Dragons, right? But let's give a more realistic example. Tyrannosaurs. Tyrannosaurus rex has some of the most diverse and some of the most famous subspecies out there, all right? With everybody else just kind of like following suit, right? Um, Lythernox was the perfect balance of both speed and robust, being able to tackle Triceratopsians. Albertosaurus is a subspecies of Tyrannosaur meant for actually just going real fast. It's actually the cheetah of the Tyrannosaurs. The Spedosaurus, the heavy-hitting bulk monster I've already explained in my Anjanath video. More robust and more, ro more built to take down and take on larger prey. Nanuksaurus. Uh, uh, do I really need to explain it? It's a Tyrannosaur that's made for the Arctic. Subspecies are basically derivative of original species that are basically made to adapt to different ecosystems. It's very possible they all just came from Tyrannosaur and over time they just evolved into these creatures that we know today. So this means that Almadron subspecies is not only a part of the original species, but is a much more evolved specimen. But how did it get here, right? Well, Magma Almadron has to use this golden liquid from its original self, right? To be able to... Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Sorry. From being able to actually adapt and mold and even merge with this lava this would make it a very very powerful predator meaning it can now increase the armor density of its body and it's able to hunt down more prey and honestly i think Ignactor might actually be in trouble here because almadron wouldn't discriminate on eating it matter of fact i might even say Ignactor is a very it's a very, probably a very common prey item for uh, Magma Almadron. Some Leviathan on Leviathan uh, action there. So, yeah, you might have to have that here. But the fact is, Magma Almadron actually may forego its golden liquid and trade it up for more magma-like secretions. Maybe it has a superheated liquid in it to help it forge your food. For example, Kezu is one of the few prey items Magma Almadron would be able to prey on in, this ca in these catacombs, right? But... It would have to keep itself superheated when dealing with certain creatures. Somnicanth as well would be another prey item as well. And I also think that Tetranodon also visits these, you know, these volcanic areas. So Magma Almadron actually has a good point to really be here. Using its lava and using the, sorry, and using the golden liquid it had in its original form, I do believe the Almadron species adapted it to kind of be like this this different creature you know they kind of just adapted it in order to basically be able to withstand themselves in lava this means they're one of the most adaptable creatures by self-improvement meaning that a regular species might be able to become a magma almadron just because it's golden liquid may even bond with you know may just bond with the elements in the magma coming into their dna and this pops out a magma almadron. Basically, the combination of lava and this golden liquid just produces this monstrosity of a, this beautiful monstrosity. So at the end of the day, why do I think magma almadron became, you know, came to be? Well, it's simply put, not only did it find a much more suitable food source in the magma regions, but it 
also found itself being able to easily adapt to this as well. There's no need for drought and there's no need to worry from it because magma al almadrods may be one of the very few creatures that can't even die from drought. But anyway, that's going to be all here for today. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe and share with your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.